Hello, hello, hello! Welcome back to Raya's Creations, and this is basically the meat and potatoes of this worth bodice, because it's a lot. It really is. And so here I am taking my fancy new pattern that took forever to draft in many, many mistakes, and I have put this on some silk, and I'm going to cut this out very, very carefully, and I'm going to actually save all these scraps for flowers, and you're going to get flowers in video three, and that's going to be fun. And um, definitely very, very painful. I think I, I developed a very big callus going on there. <laughs> and some blisters, believe it or not. Like, people ask me, like, why I don't use a thimble when I sew. I really do when it's really, really hard fabric to sew through. But this is silk, so it's not going to, uh, going to get me. And my friend gave me this silk, and she has a YouTube channel called The Mad Anarchist. Uh, she's awesome a costumer and she's hilarious actually she's absolutely funny uh, if you haven't seen her content you should probably check it out uh, definitely not for little kids it's not safe for work <laughs> so watch that on your own time <laughs> anywho let's get to this so here's my bodice the front and the back cut on the fold and I'm going ahead and what I am doing here is sewing up the careful darts again just like we did with the mock-up might have had a little bit of a fight there with the machine. And we're going to continue on mocking this up. Just kidding, we're not mocking it up. This is the real deal. This is the real deal. And like, I only had one shot at this. Otherwise I would have had to have gone and bought some more fabric. I was really thinking about like getting some acetate and just kind of rolling with it. You know, but at that point I was just like, I'll just use what I have. It is what it is. And here I am placing down some twill tape to make some boning casings and I kind of messed this up a little bit I didn't give myself enough lip at the end like a tail of the twill tape to make sure I got my bones in there but um no it is what it is it's a very time consuming project so we just are feeling the need for speed today because this is a long long process like it looks pretty fast here but let's be honest this takes a long time and very, very careful stitching. Like this is only so wide and my bones are only so wide too. So like it worked. It's not perfect, but it does the job. So here's me dumping out all my little tips and I have a little bone tipper here. We've seen this in my corset video, making sure that everything is on there very well sort of correcting some spiral steel i don't know why i've tried to correct spiral steel but like you know is what it is big thumbs up i'm now suddenly done tipping bones <laughs> if only it were that easy oh goodness gracious and now here comes the fiddly bits getting the bones into the bone casing yeah uh, the struggle was real guys the struggle was real. Twill tape doesn't really like the uh, little sharpie bits at the end of bone tipping. The tips of the bones. Yeah, I, I got that right. And uh, it's a lot of judging and fussing and just, you know, doing the whole get in there. Just get in there. Go in your home. <laughs> oh, gosh, I saw. You know what? I, I just dated myself. Yeah. Anyway, last one, I think, of the day, getting those little guys in there, and soon we shall be stitching these in here. So what I like to do with kind of like big projects, especially with this, is I like to go ahead. I've already patterned a half inch all the way around, so what I'm doing is I'm just sewing a half inch all the way around, which provides like a really good guide into how I'm going to do this bodice. And on the original, there's... Um, some what looks like ribbon and I'm going to essentially recreate the whole ribbon bit technically you could do most of this by a machine but a lot of this bodice is done by hand like you've I've done by machine what I could but I did a by hand almost the entire thing and like including the armholes like I've 
there is so much hand sewing in this, it's kind of ridiculous, and I wish I filmed a little bit more of that, but there was a lot of prick stitching, a lot of whip stitching. It's pretty much like the primary that I, I sort of stuck with. It was insane just how much there really was. And I closed up the back here because I'm going to be doing some reinforcing, some reinforced reinforced eyelets by hand, which I also didn't film because now I'm kicking myself for not doing that, but you know, I had a show on. And once I've turned and pressed that ribbon over, I'm just gonna go ahead and um, whip stitch it into place. And it is a long process, but relaxing. I'm just sitting here at my desk going do do do, probably watching a show or something, just, you know, getting my relax on. For some reason, sewing is really, really relaxing for me and I, just overall enjoy it. I mean, I wouldn't do what I do. Heck, I wouldn't even get a degree if I didn't enjoy sewing so much, but like, you know, it's all, it's all a matter of relativity. Like, you know, do what you love, love what you do. You know, just don't try to turn it into a business. Oh, You'll hate yourself later. It is drying. And that's like three different colors of silk out there for silk flowers for this worth gown. It's probably more than I need, but better to have more than less. Okay, we're almost done. We have two minutes. <laughs> oh no, current stitch position. I don't know what I'm doing here, you know. We start again. And hopefully, this is the front embroidered piece, and hopefully it'll be done soon. I hope. Anyway, update later. Bye! And here we are, and I'm talking about my worth gown, and th that packet right there has all those precious, precious pictures. Um, so I had to stitch out more lace. I did not have enough. I went ahead and I stitched out the front and the back, and there's the tester piece of me completely messing it up. But what I did is I went ahead and I saved it for like a pattern for the front, which was not helpful. And you'll see why in a little while. And there's the inside of this bodice. It is crazy and messed up, and I did some like, stay stitching, I guess, like slip stitches to kind of keep those pleats together. And you won't really see too much of them. I mean, I know they kind of look wonky and they're a little off and that might bother some people with OCD tendencies, but it didn't, it didn't bother me that much. But of course, I know that I'm gonna be trimming a lot of this way and stuff like that. So, is what it is. <sighs> Y'all, this is the real star right here. This, this fuzzy cat, she, uh, she wants to help. She's helping. <laughs> She's helping by saying, pay attention to me, mom. Uh, nope, stop it. She's gonna try, nah. <laughs> Are you the real star, Psyche? Yeah, you're helping. You're helping. Mm-hmm. And here I am getting ready to make sure those pleats stay on. So I have to like stitch them on. I just did like some somewhat big basting stitches, but kind of little because there's just a lot of hand sewing on the front of this dress. So I wasn't really too worried about them moving out of the way, like at all. I was just going to town, just getting it done. And you know, it's just something I, I absolutely enjoy doing and it was just fun to listen to like the schnick and the slide of thread through silk. It's always relaxing. Making some back stitches here. Time to tackle the back. So the thing about the back is that when you're stay stitching like this kind of fabric, you have to make sure that you stay stitched before your eyelets, because if you don't, you're not gonna be able to lace up your dress. So you're basically making like a hidden placket with your eyelets. It's an interesting concept, especially when you know that the lacing anyway is gonna get covered up anyhow with another placket. So it's like a placket over a placket under a placket over a placket. Hmm snip snip and I'm using pinking shears here because it stops fraying like 
that doesn't really stop fraying, but it'll stop most of the fraying, which is always good. little guy stays down you know and when I was looking at the inside of these worth gowns um, I really didn't see any kind of lining and in fact it was hard to like discern if there was actual lining there or not because the museum curators had done so much stitching with other fabric to kind of keep it stabilized because you know every time you handle a garment it sort of falls apart and uh, there's always damage which is why I'm pretty mad that that the Guinness let Kim Kardashian wear the Marilyn Monroe dress like are you, oh it's not made for her measurements and anytime you handle a garment it's always deteriorating anyway if you want to see a pretty good rant about that definitely go check out Abby Cox not sponsored just kidding Abby <laughs> I love your stuff so here I am getting ready to sort of pin where I want the front of this bodice to go and I know it's not in shape but I literally have to drape the front of this bodice onto the bodice. There's really no solid solid method for that and but before I do that I have to literally prick stitch lace completely down which further stabilizes the chiffon and um it was a long, tedious process because I was hiding stitches along the way. I didn't really want, you know, unless you stick your face right up, like an inch away from, you know, my costume, my garment, I should say. I made a garment. I didn't just make a costume. I made a garment. Um, you will won't really notice these. They're pretty invisible. A lot of the stitches I did were actually pretty invisible, except for the ones that weren't. And you'll see those in this video as well. So here comes the moment of truth, which is a lot of pinning. And I mean, pin, 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 pin. I was trying to get this thing as straight as possible, just like it was on the Worth gown, but, or like on the original, um, the extant example. And that's just not possible. And even on the original, you can still see like it pulls oddly and everything, but it's also had like a hundred years to relax. Seriously, the fibers have, had time to just open up and be like yeah we served our purpose and here comes the moment where everyone's butt cheeks clenches because I was freaking out and I was just like you know what I'm just gonna feel along the bottom of this and just chop chop but I really needed to actually put some ease into the fabric because if you don't put any ease like this is why we cut and trim our curves well, it's the same concept. Um, the front of this bodice is very, very curvy, and I need it to fit over this curve, essentially over and under this curve, and it was not wanting to be nice to me. Mm -mm. Nope. But I got it. I did it. I did get it eventually. It's just a lot of judging and fussing and smoothing and that's okay though because this is the nature of this dress so just constantly moving things around to get as close as we can and sort of pinning to stabilize because all pinning is is just basically metal basting but you need to baste and pin and clip to keep it all relative as much as you can and I actually had to loosen up the back of this dress because it was too tight and I couldn't really move all this fabric and shove it where I needed to go and you know it does look pretty on the inside it's a little bit of a mess but anything with this much hand sewing is going to be a mess especially if you don't line it but you know the lining is also 
the base of this dress. I don't, it's, it's complicated. Worth gowns are complicated and challenging, but you can do it. You can do this. So here's some more judging and fussing and making sure I kind of put enough ease in there, but I wanted to leave enough fabric that, you know, if I messed up, I could kind of go back and undo it, you know, just kind of inch my way through through this project. And eventually I didn't like working with all of these pins. So I started putting my little clips down. Again, you can get that at my favorite store, Madame Sews, or, you know, on Amazon. They sell them on Amazon too. But these, these little guys are incredibly useful for making things just stay. And I have to do the other side, and just like that, the other side is done. So now I get to baste it all together to make sure it all stays together. And as you can see, I have like a row of pins running along the side because I'm just literally going to sew that straight onto the side. But first, I need to baste everything so that I'm not in danger of moving anything when I take it off the dress form which is a very, very real possibility considering this front panel is just kind of like floating there. And yeah, it's a scary thought that if it like moved and I'm like trying not to fight too much with the front boning there. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the side and get that all stitched up. And it's, again, this is not the final stitching. This is just basing, basting because on the front of the bodice, I went ahead and I did the most extremely small stitches to hold this on and like you know like I said earlier in my previous video it is not exact it is not an exact replica but it is close and it is my interpretation of the wheat worth gown and honestly I learned a lot I learned a lot I don't really go this far in period and clothing because you know I do the SCA every now and then and um yeah, and it was nice to kind of step out of my comfort zone. So I'm also going to base the armhole just to make sure it stays because I don't want this fabric moving anywhere. Like it is on there and this is where it's going to stay forever and ever and ever. And now that I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to base the back panel. So the back panel is actually what the embroidery is actually folded up onto itself to protect the embroidery because this panel lays over the lacing strip in the back of the dress which is interesting but I also had to play like the patchy patchy lace game and oh boy it was um definitely interesting but I needed to get this all basted together so I could sew it and basically whip stitch the back essentially so it was all closed up and like I said there's a lot of handwork done on this this dress and you know I it was a wonder to me honestly just a just a big big wonder and we can see that's where it's gonna get whip stitched in the front on the front side and we are whip stitching with silk right now I shouldn't say we I I am whip stitching lots and lots of silk and you know I developed a callus on my, my finger from this ouch so now I'm going ahead and I'm going to place hooks on the left side of my gown because that's how it was in the original so like I said the dress laces up the back but it hooks on the left side and then the lace actually folds over the left breast but goes underneath the top lace unfortunately I just have mine going straight over the top of the lace because I didn't realize that well, I guess I just missed the detail in the photos. I was like, what am I looking at here? And it was only until after I got to this stage that I realized that I did not properly plan. And so I just kind of had to kind of fly with it. But if you're going to make this dress, definitely remember that the lace goes over the side and then under the top of the lace on the left breast. So here I am trying to brush up my slight embroidery skills with too long thread here and uh, make some pretty hooks. But thank goodness no one can see my knots, but I didn't do a traveling knot and I should have, or just a loose tail and kind of like tucked it in, but I ended up fighting with everything. I basically did everything I shouldn't. <laughs> and you know, that's always nice. Good job, good job me. You, you did it, you did it. 
So this is a lot of fighting, but eventually I kind of got over myself and managed to put the other, you know, two, three, four, five, six, five, five other hooks on there. That's okay. That's fine. This is fine. <laughs> but this has definitely been a very, very fun project, and I would do it again. Maybe not in this color. I don't really like pink, but this was this was so much pink for me. So much pink. And we'll have to do a poll here on like what the next the next outfit should be. I have a few options. You know, 1950s uh, suit, 1940s, 1950s suit. That'll be fun. Test my drafting skills. And here is the back, and I am pinning on the lace to the front back panel. Again, there's going to be a lot of little stitches to practically make it invisible. And also, you know, fixing this little bit of trim here that I kind of had to... It's like a floater, I guess. It's just like one of those pieces of trim that just needed to be stitched on very, very, very carefully. And like I said, all those very small, nearly invisible prick stitches, and this is just at the end of getting them on there. Yep, that's a lot of sewing, a lot of hand sewing, but you know, I'm glad I did it. And tying it off. Boop. So here's where I realized that I need more, <laughs> more uh, chiffon because it looked very broken up in the back. So, and I'm marking thread hooks right here. Thread hooks are important and they're also in the original. And so I do my thread hooks a little bit differently. So I just kind of loop and pull and loop and pull and loop and pull. It's like a sailor's method. And it works out a lot faster than, you know, I mean, you could do hooks and, or thread bars any, any way, honestly, but this is just the method I, I chose to do.